Hi, I'm Walt Richer. I'm here at uh, PDC 2008, last day of the conference, and I'm talking with Adam Kinney about my new tool called Shazam. Shazam is a uh, it's a WPF uh, pixel shader generator and tester. And the problem you have is that um, it's very complex to create a shader and use it in WPF. First, you have to write some C code. You have to compile that with the DirectX compiler, and you have to take that code and um, create a WPF class uh, and um, and then at, finally once you create the WPF class and you have to add that to your application so I wrote this tool uh, my guidance for this was I like the way Kazaml works and another favorite utility of mine is LinkPad where you can just quickly open up a link query and then run it and test it and that was my idea so you start by looking at the top here you've got a set of sample images that are part of the application and I tried to pick ones that have some good color mixes and lines for testing the image out. And you can also add your own custom image here. If you don't like any of the ones I've picked, you can go over here and do a file open image and put your own picture in there. Um, you can also load image files. Now, uh, shaders are written in a derivative of C called HLS. And so, let's say you're just cruising the internet one day and you come along here and you find this shader you want to try to, uh, you want to try out in your application. This is supposed to be a grayscale, so I'll right-click on this and copy it, and then I'll bring it into my application, like so. And now I need to run the DirectX compiler. So Shazam already knows where the DirectX compiler is. It's up here in the settings. It knows where that's at. And when I come up here and choose Tools, Compile Shader, I come down here, the compiler just finished, and it's telling me there's something wrong. Line 3 has an error. And so not only is this a testing tool, but you can also use this to write your own shaders. The problem is when I copied that comment in, it, it was a multi-line comment and didn't come in correctly. So if I comment this line out, it looks like this is a bad one and this is a bad one too. Now I think I have a, a shader that will go ahead and compile OK. There go. And now the second thing is, is that I'm missing a main entry point. The shader in, in our implementation has to have a method called main. Or case M. So I'm going to go up here and create this, this method here, PS. I'm going to change that to Mames. Pain. Okay, and then we'll try it one more time. F7 is a shortcut for compiling. Now I don't have any compilers anymore, uh, so we're ready to go. So in the next step in the compiler process is you have to create this WPF class, and that's what Shazam does. It's automatically generated a C -sharp class for me. I'm going to press F11 to make it full screen. It automatically generated this class, which derives some shader effect and created the correct input properties that I need, the different properties I need for this class. It also created one in the VB language as well. So the idea is that you can then copy and paste this into your application and you're done, right? You've got the PS file and you've got the, this code here. And then we can go check to see if it worked. We can apply this shader and we'll see if we get a grayscale image up here and it, it applies this shader to all of the sample images once. And you can remove the shader by going over here and say remove shader F6 and see what it looks like. So you can just toggle back and forth between having the shader applied to any sample picture and removing it. Now obviously this is a really simple shader. There's not much settings here. Right? If I go over here, this is where I'm allowed to change the shader settings. Since this one doesn't expect me to type any extra information in, there's nothing on this window. Um, but if I open up some existing ones, now Microsoft released a shader library a couple weeks ago, and they have a nice testing harness. The problem is it's not very extendable, right? You have to go in and modify their Microsoft source code in order to write the new shader. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, why don't I just bring their libraries in and we'll just run them here. So you click on Shader Loader, and there's two tabs. The first tab is for any location you want to store your own shaders in, and the second one is the sample shaders I'm shipping with Shazam. And so I can look at this banded swirl, which is one of Microsoft samples. It knows that it loaded it in immediately into this area here. And the, the key I want you to see here is that there's a center, a float 2. That um, These are the HLS elements values, float, float 2, float 3, float 4. They basically translate, floats translate to, to doubles in .NET, and float 2s translate to either sizes or points, and float 4s translates to color. 
So if you look at it, you see I've got a center point and a spiral strength and a distance threshold. And if you go look at my shader it was generated, I have to compile. And look at my shader that was generated, you'll see it and press F11 to go full screen. I now have some new dependency properties we didn't have before. Center property, spiral strength property, and distance threshold. And now when you go look at the change shader settings window, I now have some input controls over here for changing those values. This is auto-generated. Every time you open up a new shader and successfully compile it, it will create a test harness automatically. And, and so now I go look at my picture. There's that picture. Um, I can grab the spiral strength, and you can see how fast it is to apply a shader here as I grab this and slide it over. Nice. It shows you. And since I don't know what your ma I don't know what values you want. I don't know if you want a zero or one or zero to three sixty. I made this so that it's completely customizable. I can type in another number here, let's say twenty. Now this slider goes from zero to tw twenty instead of zero to one, and you can see I get a much more, more um, stronger effect applied. I can use negative numbers. Uh, it's supposed to have error handling built in, so if you type any invalid number, it shouldn't break the, the shader. So let's try playing around with that a little bit. And here and here. And this one will add some bands to it. See how this one's adding the banding effect? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if it's applying to different pictures, too. And then this expects point value. So again, I don't know what number. I've played around with it enough to know that if I do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that's the center of the picture. And now you can see that that spiral and the banding is aimed around the center of the picture. So yeah, let me show you just a couple more other ones. Um, are you you running out of time? Yeah, there? running out of time. All right. <laughs> well, it also works with colors. It, there's a color picker over here that lets you um, dial in a color. That comes from the Kazaml code base. Thanks, Robbie, for giving me that code. And uh, you can find this tool at shazam-tool.com. Okay. Thanks a lot. Sure.